Hey, welcome back, seventh grade. We are have just finished wrapping up chapter 10, and now we're going um, at the end of the year here to be looking ahead. Um, this is going to be in the way back of um, chapter 12. It's going to be in the back of your book, and it's going to be on page looking ahead to. Um, looking ahead as we go through, and we're still getting used to our flipped classroom here. Don't forget uh, that you can rewatch this video, you can read the examples in the book, or you can watch the personal tutor videos from your textbook um, to better understand the information that we're going to go over. So as you are on page looking ahead to way past chapter 12 in the back of the book, um, we're going to be looking today at simplifying polynomials. First, we should probably remember simplify means to get numbers down to the smallest of terms. So if I were going to simplify 2 plus 3, well, that's really me just saying that is 5, so I only have one term rather than 2. Uh, polynomials, which would be a good word to put down in your vocabulary, um, they are algebraic expressions. If we remember, algebraic is the study of math that uses variables in place of numbers. They are algebraic expressions that contain one or more monomial. If we remember what monomial is, that's kind of a, another word in itself. Monomial, we decided, remember, was a number, a variable, or a product of the two. Okay, and that's what we did uh, in chapter 10 when we were combining things with exponents. So hopefully that's just a real quick recap of some of the vocabulary and things that we're going to see here for the first looking ahead, getting us ready to be eighth graders. So on we go. So if you're on that page in your book, uh, something you're going to see within this looking ahead is that they're using models a lot. They're using these um, tiles to show what we're looking at, okay? Um, their use of tiles is like what I've done before, just to show the like terms. If you remember what like terms are, those are the things that have something in common. So x and 2x, those are like terms. Um, x squared and 2x squared, anything with the same exponents. Uh, regular numbers, 3 and 2 are like terms. So that's what these are just showing, is that they are like terms and that those pictures are the ones that you're going to be able to combine. So here I am. They want us to simplify the polynomials. Simplify meaning we have a lot of terms right here, and we want to kind of break that down and make them smaller. So over here, they showed you that they have 4x, and we also have another tile and 1x that are the same, that they're alike, like we've done before, I would go about and circle my like terms. You've seen me do that before um, in our past lessons and chapters. So what they did here was combine these two to show that, well, 4x and another 1x is the same as 5x. So combine those two things together. One thing we notice is all of a sudden, this x squared came over here, and the negative 3 went to that side. The reason they moved those around and put them in that order is because we write them in standard form. When we're simplifying polynomials, standard form just means that we're going to write the powers in decreasing order from left to right. These notes are getting kind of messy here. I think this marker is a little too big. But we're doing it. So here we go. Um, continuing on, at the bottom we have some more examples. And maybe you want to try, maybe you want to pause me right now and try it on your own um, for the next page here. But at the bottom, they're just telling us that what we really have is this same thing that we started with at the top of the page is really simplified down to here x squared plus 5x plus a negative 3. And we know that adding a negative is really just the same as subtraction. So simplified, here I am at x squared plus 5x minus 3. So on this next one, maybe you want to give these two a try. Maybe you want to pause me right now and um, try them out. And maybe you want to see me do the first one and then you do the second. So I'm going to go ahead 
and start this one. So if you want to pause now, would be the time. Um, I'm not going to use models. I think the shapes, for me, they're a little bit messy. If you want to, they're in your book. For me, and what you've seen from me before, is that I like to circle and square and kind of just shape my like terms together so I know what I'm combining. So right now what I see is that I have an x, and I look for another one with an x to the first power. And I take the sign in front of it because I know that that's a negative 1x and a negative 2x. To remind myself that it's a negative 1, I just put that 1 right in front of that x to remind myself. I also see that I have constant numbers. So I have a 1 and a 5. So what I really do with those is I'm going to take them over. Well, this is a negative x and a negative 2x. And over here I have a 1 and a 5. So I really just combine my like terms and put everything down below. So what I really have is that negative 1 plus a negative 2 is a negative 3x plus my positive of 6. So this is now the same thing as what I had above, but it's simplified. All right, so D, maybe you try it on your own and you're checking your work could look a little different than mine. Maybe you use models. Maybe you just do the work. So here we are. I'm going to do my circling thing. I'm going to remember that there's a 1 right in front of there. I see that this is x to the second power, and there's also another x to the second power on this side. I see that there is a 3x, and there's no other thing else combining that, and there's also a 4. Maybe I have to have a third shape. Maybe I do a triangle. So then I rewrite this, combining my 1x plus my other 1x. So I have 2x squared, put my exponent with the smallest power next, and then my number with no um, exponent power at the end. So it's in standard form. All right, next one. Again, we see those shapes here. Um, you can either choose to use them, or maybe you want to ignore them. That is really up to you. Here we are removing zero pairs to simplify polynomials. Zero pairs, what that means is really just if I add 2 plus negative 2, that's a zero pair because that gives me zero. So we're really looking for opposites here or things that cancel each other out. So here I am. They're looking to write the polynomial as a sum. So I know sum means addition. So what they did here with the 2x squared minus 3x minus x to the second power. They said that's the same as really just adding the opposite all the way through. So they just went chop minus, chop minus. Oh, the smart board's a little bit off. There we go. Hopefully you'll be bear with me there. And they just said, okay, I'm looking at it as a sum, as an addition problem. So then they use their tiles here to show that model. And they saw that there was two colors that were the same. They had the same shape. So what they did was they combined those, and then those two canceled each other out. So there's just one x left over. So that's kind of what that looks like if you're using shapes. For those of you that are a little less visual with the shapes, maybe, and you just like the concrete circling and the squaring of the numbers, it would look like this. They had a 2x squared. They did that chop minus, so now they have a plus a negative 3x plus a negative 1x squared. So they just did that chop minus there. Then they really just combined their like terms and simplified that and said, oh, 2 plus a negative 1 is just a 1x squared plus that negative 3x. But I know here adding a negative is the same as subtraction. So I can write this as x squared minus 3x, just like they have right here. So you have quite a few options depending on what you prefer. Again, if you want to pause me and you want to try these on your own, then check the answer. You just go ahead and go for it. Good for you. If not, if you want to watch one and then do the other, whatever works. You are in charge of your learning right now. So here I am. Again, they say use models if needed. Ms. Simmers is going to choose to not use them. I'm going to choose to keep going with my circling and squaring like terms method. And I know they're like terms based on their variable and exponent. So. But I am going to go with that strategy they had of doing the sum. So I'm going to do add the opposite just so I remember that that sign in front of the number um, tells me if it's a positive or negative. So here I circle my negative 2x and my 3x. So that's really like, okay, negative 2x plus 3x 
and then plus this positive 6 on the end. Well, a negative 2 plus a positive 3 is just 1x plus 6. So now I'm simplified at that point because I have a term and another term that cannot be combined. How about this next one again then? Okay, I know there's a 1 right in front of that x. I like to remember those things. Maybe I want to do that add the opposite trick. I tell you. So here I circle my x to the second powers. Maybe I write them over here so I remember that those two are together. And then I circle my, maybe square my other pairs, my 5 and my negative 1. So that's plus 5 plus that negative 1. So a negative 2x plus 1x is a negative 1x squared. And then 5 plus a negative 1 is positive 4. So I write that positive as a plus sign. Well, this is simplified, and I don't really need to write that there, so I can just have a negative x squared plus 4. So really, this is all about us going back to our combining like terms, which we have done before. Uh, bear with me here. We have one more slide. And this next one, we're talking about perimeter. Perimeter, first we have to remember what that means. So we're going to use the polynomial to represent uh, the perimeter of the figure at the right. The figure at the right, we know, is a parallelogram. Perimeter, we need to remember, is the sum, meaning addition, of all sides. So really what we're doing is we're adding all of these sides together. So what that looks like is my perimeter is, well, let's start on this side right here. So my perimeter is 8 plus 3a plus 8 plus 3a. Well, what I notice here is that I have like terms of 3a, positive 3a, 8, and 8. So what I can do is combine those like terms and say, oh, 3a plus 3a, that's a total of 6a's. And if you needed to picture that, three, if you had an a, 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 three of those a's, and then plus another three a's would be a, 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 you know, you have six of them. And then we know 8 plus 8 is 16. So this is our simplified answer. But since it's a word problem and there's centimeters involved, we probably want to put a label on it there. This is also like example 4 on looking ahead, number 1. Our last two examples, maybe you want to give them a try on your own and then follow along. Maybe you just want to look at them and then do them on your own. It's up to you. Last two. I'm going to use my circle and squaring strategy again. So I'm going to first find all my add the opposite so I know the sign. Take my 3x squared. Take my negative 1x squared. Those are alike terms. They're to the same power. Blocks my next two that are the same. My 5x and 2x, they're both positive. So here I go with a, what is my 3x plus a negative 1x? Maybe I want to visualize that here and put it so I can see what that is. And I'm adding that to my 5x plus 2x that came from right here. So what I notice is 3x plus negative, 3x squared plus negative x squared. Well, 3 plus a negative 1 is 2x squared plus then my 5x plus 2x is 7x. So I am simplified at that polynomial. Lastly, let's circle my like terms, but before I do that, let's add the opposite so I see the sign of the numbers. So I'm going to circle my x to the second powers, and I have one and another here. I may box my x values, and then maybe I triangle my last one, even though it's by itself. So what I see here is I have a negative 2 x squared plus that negative 1x squared plus my 3x plus that negative 5x and then plus that last 7. So here I combine these two and 7 kind of was on its own over here. So finally, they're in the right order. Now I can put them together. So my negative x squared plus negative 1x squared is a negative 3x squared. My 3x and negative 5x is actually a negative 2x 
and then my plus 7. Since I have that adding a negative, I'm just going to simplify this a little bit more to negative 3x squared minus 2x plus 7. All right, that was a little bit longer of a video than we're used to, uh, but hopefully you took some good notes, wrote down some questions that you have that you can bring to class tomorrow. And remember, rewatch the video, read the examples in the book, or watch the personal tutors. So I think you will be in good shape. Make sure you come with questions and you come prepared to class on Monday for this time around.